Before I get to our next big example, let's do a little warm up. So I'm going to have a sub n equal to a 1 half to the nth power, which I could also rewrite as 2 to the minus n. We'll fit this to the function f of x equals 2 to the minus x. As with the exponential, I just need to plot the three points, 1, 0, and minus 1. So 1 goes to a half, 0 goes to 1, minus 1 goes to 2. And then 2 to the minus x looks like this graph here. Same idea as with e to the minus x. So we have that the limit of this is going to go to 0. Now, here's something new. I'm going to have what we call n factorial, which is just take 1, 2, 3, 4, all the numbers up to n, and then multiply them together. If we flip that over, the limit as n goes to infinity is going to be equal to 0. Let's see how we can get that. So first, I'm just going to start with the punchline, and then we'll go work back through it to see how we got there. So what's the idea? Well, all these numbers are positive numbers. So if I flip them over, this, these are all still positive numbers for n bigger than 1, or equal to 1. So what I'm going to have as a lower bound, or as a number that's underneath all of these, is going to be 0. On the other hand, we'll see in a second that I can get 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 bigger than each of these terms. Now this I can rewrite as 2 to the 1 times 1 half to the n. So by the result I just proved, as n goes to infinity, we'll have that this goes to 0. This is always 0. It's just it's a sub n equal to 0. It never changes. So we're going to have a squeeze theorem. On our a sub n, we're going to 0. On our b sub n here, we're also going to 0. So the thing in the middle has to go to 0. So let's see how we get this piece in the middle. So to do that, first let's clear the denominators. We're going to multiply both sides by n factorial times 2 to the n minus 1. So all that does is just to switch the 2 to the n minus 1 here and the n factorial over there. So now let's line things up. So we're checking 2 to the n minus 1 is that less than or equal to n factorial. Well this is going to be 2 times itself n minus 1 times. On the bottom, we have n factorial, which is 1 up through n multiplied out. Let's line things up. Well, OK, this is going to work because I wouldn't want a 2 above the 1 because 2 is not less than or equal to 1. But for every other term that I've lined up, we definitely have 2 less than or equal to 2, 2 less than or equal to 3, all the way up to 2 less than or equal to n because these numbers on the bottom are just getting bigger. So that's going to say, OK, there's a rule. If a is less than b, c is less than d, then a times c is less than b times d. So that's going to say I can multiply everything on the top, everything on the bottom, and it won't break my inequality. So that's going to say that 2 to the n minus 1 is less than or equal to n factorial. So that's going to give me this inside here, and so our limit going to 0 follows. Here are some more definitions that go with sequences. We'll save examples of these for the parts that come after this one. My first definition, monotone increasing. So the idea is going to be that my a1 is less than or equal to a2, less than or equal to a3, so on and so on. So the idea is, same idea as increasing with functions. We can always move up in this direction, can level off, but it's always going to be increasing. If I go to this picture where we have the y-axis on its side, where we just plot the values, so it's like I'm projecting over in that direction, then what's happening? This monotone increasing is just going to mean we're always moving to the right. We could stop, pick up a few points landing on the same point, but then it has to keep continuing to the right if it doesn't stop there completely. Monotone decreasing, just flip the inequalities so the idea is going to be when I look at the graph along the n-axis, so n replacing the x-axis, this thing's always moving down. Again, because I have equalities, it can level off for a little bit. But if it's going to keep continue moving to a different value, it's going to have to go back down. 
we look at the y-axis with everything projected, then that's just going to be the a sub n's are going to always be moving to the left. They can stop for a few points, but if they continue to move again, it's going to go to the left. I have bounded above. This just means there's some number m1 such that all of our a sub n's are less than or equal to that m1. So for the graph picture, that just says draw on your line and then all the points live underneath. If I look at the y-axis on its side, that's just saying you mark off your m1 and then all of your an's are to the left. If we're bounded below, same idea. You're going to draw your line. All your points are going to live above that line now on the graph. And then if I go to the y-axis picture, we draw off our m2 and then everything's going to be to the right. All the an's are to the right. So we put these together and we have this thing called the monotone convergence theorem. It's going to say if a sub n is bounded, monotonic increasing or decreasing, then a sub n is going to converge to some limit L. The only downside to this theorem is it tells us we have a limit, but it gives us no idea what that limit might be. So we'll see an example later on where the monotone convergence theorem actually helps us out in finding a limit.